Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Warhammer 40k Commander Precon? Wizards of the Coast's Universes Beyond push is in full swing with what is the first of many, 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 many collaborations between Wizards and other games, other IPs, other properties to create a line of crossover Magic the Gathering products. This time, it's Commander decks. And after all, Warhammer 40k could be described as the Magic the Gathering of turn-based tabletop miniature war games, with an estimated player base of over 2 million. But do these decks live up to the hype? How balanced are they for playing against one another? And with a price tag now climbing to the $60 to $70 range and above, will you be getting your money worth. All these questions and more will be answered in this video, so let's take a look. The Warhammer 40k Commander product line consists of four pre-constructed decks, ready to play out of the box, and each based on one of the factions in the Warhammer 40k universe. Forces of the Imperium, Necron Dynasties, the Ruinous Powers, and the Tyranid Swarm. More about each of those decks in a moment. There are also two versions of each Commander deck, a normal version and a Collector's Edition fully foiled version. As you might imagine, Imagine the Collector's Edition decks are substantially more expensive, selling for well over $300 as of the recording of this video at most retailers. And I cannot wait to show you that foiling quality. Oh, well, actually, you're gonna have to wait because every single store near me was sold out, had none coming in, and up. Uh, I literally could not get one. Yes, I am the largest Magic the Gathering YouTube channel known for his reviews of products. I could not get one of these. Sorry, G good luck if you want one. And while I haven't seen one in person, I'm willing to bet those foils probably curl. In terms of cost of the non-foil editions, while MSRP doesn't exist anymore, we can see that on online marketplaces, these editions are selling for $60 or more. That price actually seems to be climbing. The contents of the 40k Warhammer Commander decks is similar to a regular precon, in that these are 100 cards playable out of the box, with a combination of reprints and original designs. However, as I will explain in more detail in a moment, I feel that these Warhammer 40k decks have more of a cohesive aesthetic than we've usually seen in Commander Precons before. The overall quality and power of most of these original cards seems to be higher as well, perhaps because this is the first in a new line of Universes Beyond products, Wizards put extra effort into making them a hit. So much so that most of the cards that you're going to find here are original designs. How many are reprints? Well, not that many. In fact, there are 160 total brand new cards in Warhammer 40k, a staggering increase from traditional Commander releases, even with the big Commander pre-con spring sets. What's more, 159 of those 160 are non-land cards. The only new land in these decks is Necron Dynasty's Tomb Fortress. So if it's not clear by now, these decks are unique, and not just in terms of the IP. We have never seen a Commander Precon set with this many new cards, ever. Between the brand new cards and the all new artwork for old cards, the financial value of these decks is far, far higher than what you'd expect for a newly released Commander Precon, which is also probably why the prices are skyrocketing on the secondary market. Because of all those original designs, because of all that money wrapped up in them, it's hard to meaningfully evaluate these decks from a financial perspective beyond simply saying, limited supply of rare collector's product means stonks go up. Now, I'll try and talk about the most noteworthy cards from each of these decks, of course, including notable reprints, but for the most part, I feel comfortable just giving the blanket statement that these decks are a good financial value if you can afford the 60 to 70 to, wow, $80 price tag some of them are currently going for. With that being said, I would still like to take a look at the financial breakdown of these decks. To at least give you a perspective, if you were to buy all the cards in each Commander deck as of the filming of this video, Necron Dynasties would cost you a whopping $202, Forces of the Imperium would be about $208, Ruinous Powers a bit lower at $177, and Tyranid 
Infinite Swarm in last at $160.07. That's still very, very respectable. Let's really eliminate bulk. And instead of looking at a dollar and up, I want to look at $2 and up. Doing so means that in Necron Dynasties, there's still $173.97 worth of cards worth individually $2 or more. Forces of the Imperium, $163.30. Wow. Ruinous Powers dips down to $113. 1973, and Tyranid Swarm comes down to 129.35. Looking at the individual value in each deck, Forces of the Imperium has the second highest price tag of the four, which makes sense given that the total costs of the singles is the highest. The most expensive cards in Forces of Imperium are the Golden Throne, Vexilus Praetor, and Celestine, the Living Saint, all of which, of course, are brand new. The most notable reprints here are Talisman of Progress and Skull Clamp. The mana base in this deck is serviceable, but not great. Over half the lands are basics. The rest of the deck, though, is quite powerful, and if you replaced some of these basics with better dual and tri lands, you'd have yourself an excellent, nearly out of box deck. This will actually be a common theme with most of these decks. Forces of the Imperium is a go wide strategy in Esper colors with a ton of tokens and anthems. The deck's signature mechanic, Squad, allows you to flood the board with copies of your creatures, and the commander, Inquisitor Greyfax, pumps those creatures, increasing their power and even giving them vigilance, which is important for a deck that plans to attack a lot in a multiplayer format. Moving on to Necron Dynasties, the most expensive cards here are Scepter of Eternal Glory and Biotransference, with Resurrection Orb and Out of the Tombs coming in right below them. The deck also has a ton of excellent reprints, including Darkness, Mystic Forge, Living Death, yeah! and Caged Sun. Keep in mind, Necron Dynasties is the most expensive pre-con currently, going for over $85 on TCG Player. If you want to know how the deck plays, the answer is quite well. The deck is helmed by Sazkar... Sag by Zarek, the Silent King. The Silent King's self-mill theme makes the deck very consistent at finding its most important cards, and as a mono-black deck, there's nothing in the mana base to hold you back from casting all your spells. I would put this deck at the top of the pack in terms of out-of-the-box playability, but honestly, there's some stiff competition. The third Warhammer precon is the Ruinous Powers, and the most expensive card in it is Blood for the Blood God. Notably, with this commander deck, the second most expensive card is a reprint, Chromatic Lantern. Other reprints of note in the Ruinous Powers are Talisman of Indulgence and Talisman of Dominance. It is really great to see talismans get reprints. I love it so much I'd love to see it happen in the Magic-themed Commander decks. The lower overall cost of singles in Ruinous Powers results in it having a lower selling point on the secondary market, looking at about $65 for this Commander deck. The Ruinous Powers is helmed by Abaddon, the Despoiler. A bad one. A bit on the nose, don't you think, Warhammer designers? Anyway, this deck is all about Cascade. This deck is all about Cascade, which is definitely one of the more fun mechanics in Magic the Gathering. The power level ceiling of the deck is high, but there's a certain amount of RNG involved in a deck like this. If you Cascade into something expensive, you're getting a stellar two for one. But if you Cascade into something small or mopey, it's a bit of a disappointment. Of course, that chaos is the perfect flavor for a faction that worships, well, chaos. This is another deck with a rough mana base with 24 total basic lands out of the 38 in the deck. But hey, you find your chromatic lantern, who cares then, right? Tyranid Swarm is, financially speaking, the lowest of the bunch. The only card worth more than $10 is Gearson Starn, Kelamorph 
who is a sweet build around commander to be fair. Though it's really interesting to note that while the overall cost of this deck is the lowest of the four, it actually has the second most cards that cost more than $2 with 30 in total, the sum of which is $129.35. The deck does have a few nice reprints, including Harold's Horn and Hardened Scales, but most of the other reprinted cards don't carry much value. Also, it is my opinion that Tyranid Swarm is the weakest deck of the four when played out of the box without upgrades. Led by the Swarm Lord, Tyranid gameplay revolves around making massive creatures and turning them sideways, which, while certainly fun, doesn't quite translate to the best commander success. That said, the mana base is great for a three-colored deck, thanks in large part to the ramp spells included in the deck, such as Rampant Growth and Far Seek. One of the coolest ramp spells in the deck is actually a creature, a Talon Jackal, a sweet way to get a respectable Rampant Growth effect while chipping in for a bit of damage. All four Warhammer decks are some of the most functional and cohesive precons we've ever seen. The four play very well together, and with a nice array of diverse, proactive game plans, plenty of interaction including board wipes, and decent, though not spectacular, mana fixing. There are really very few stinkers in these decks, and finally we get a white precon deck that doesn't come with Zatalpa Primal Dawn. Hooray! Kidding aside, it's really cool to see so many fun and unique designs for the new cards alongside so many stellar reprints. I mean, the Grixis deck comes with Dark Ritual and Brainstorm. From top to bottom, from flavor to power to reprint quality to financial value to gameplay, Wizards of the Coast and I suppose Games Workshop has knocked this collaboration out of the park. Honestly, this puts me in a really weird position. Despite the extreme markups on this product, they are still essentially worth it financially, but I still don't agree with markups. I wish that Wizards of the Coast stated and took efforts to maintain an MSRP on new releases. And when we look at so many, many previous precons that also had markups out of the gate and see them now going for so much less than their MSRP, I want to say, like I always say, don't buy these, just buy the old precons and wait until these inevitably drop. But are these going to inevitably drop? They can't reprint these Warhammer cards without making Magic the Gathering versions. And while they have pledged to do that for Secret Lair, universes beyond cards, they have clearly said that products like Warhammer, the upcoming Lord of the Rings, these are not planned to have magic skins. So will these cards ever even be reprinted? I'm willing to bet a few of them will eventually, years down the line, but in that meantime, the prices are gonna go up, these pre-cons are probably gonna be coveted, I can't even get the limited edition foil ones, I, I don't even know what to say to you looking to me for that advice, except don't do anything that you cannot financially handle and be comfortable with. Do not just buy them because it's going to be an investment. Buy them because you love them, because you want to play with them, because you want these cards. And maybe, just maybe, if it is only a few singles that you want, price out those singles and see if it might still be a better deal to pick up the individual cards rather than the product. But yeah, this product is a home run and I don't even like Warhammer. Final conclusion, despite the extreme and growing scarcity, and of course the immersion breaking impact these cards and decks are having on Magic the Gathering, as commander decks just looking at them in that regard, in isolation, this is an absolute triumph. The product is extremely high quality, maybe higher quality than we've ever seen out of a commander precon. And therefore, despite my reservations, I'm going to give Warhammer 40K decks an A a solid shining A. These decks are phenomenal, and I'm willing to bet that you will have a phenomenal time playing with them, assuming you can get your hands on them. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you, and I know it is a different one than my usual Is It Worth It To Buy, so now I wanna hear from you. What do you think of these Warhammer 40K decks? Are you picking them up just because some of these cards are really good in Commander, even if you don't like the flavor? Do you like the flavor? There's nothing wrong with savoring the flavor of Universes Beyond, even though some Magic players 
me may not be a big fan, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And remember, when you are picking up products such as Warhammer 40k or just packs of magic cards or maybe card sleeves, when it is possible and when it is reasonable to do so, try and spend that money where you spend time playing this great game, and that's at your local game store. You're supporting your Magic the Gathering community when you do. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Happy Toe Claws. Princess, the professor's favorite Magic the Gathering deck to battle each other with two top eight Pro Tour Dark Ascension decks that you have selected. This could be great in Commander. <laughs> Who's gonna tell her? <laughs> I'm going to flash back Unburial Rites, and I'm gonna target Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. Tap two and play Whip Flare. Where do all your creatures go, Tappy? I, they're alive in my heart still. These are my original four Worm Coils, and I even have actual ones from 10 years ago, and these are my actual Worm Coils. And She's uh, gonna flip it right away. And it flips, gonna Vapor Snag your bird back again. <laughs> the way you shuffle is so hard on those cards. I'm sorry. <laughs>